I can't tell you how my heart is thumping. Doggone it, get in here. I wonder if I should take a poke at him. Doggone it all. The drama that unfolds under the ice in a pike spearing shanty hits a different world. We'll explore it in a minute, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodlands of the north, it's history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again at all that waits the sportsmen in the state of Michigan. And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in Arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in this state of Michigan The sound of boots over crusty snow dragging a sled at this time of year, that's the sound of ice fishermen wending their way to the fishing grounds. Early in the season, the snow is soft and the ice is clear. But with the freezings and thawings that take place in January and February, slush forms on the ice and the top freezes, making walking difficult at best. Just what goes on in those ice shanties, the little buildings that dot the ice on many inland lakes? Mike Copenhaver from Ludington keeps his shanty locked because he stores a lot of gear inside. Not particularly valuable gear to the average person, but valuable when you want to spend a day spearing northern pike. The rug is extra insulation, blocks the light from the cracks around the door. You need a dark shanty for best visibility down into the water. You also need a warm shanty, and an LP gas bottle should always be hooked up outside, just in case there's a gas leak around the hose. You can see already that a nice shanty is designed for comfort. Not at all like fishing in the open. The wind and snow are of no consequence to a shanty fisherman. Mike hands out some of the gear we can't keep inside if we're going to have room for the camera. An ice spud, a shovel for packing snow around the base of the shanty, box of miscellaneous gear, and buckets to sit on for fishing outdoors. The floor of the shanty is a false floor. Covers up the big rectangular hole that is probably cut with a chainsaw. From a hook in the ceiling hangs the minnow bucket. Now that cord goes through a hole in the floor. These minnows stay under the ice for days at a time. They're bait for tip-ups outside, sometimes used as bait or decoys to attract pike under the shanty for spearing. Mike passes the bucket outside. We'll set a few tip-ups for Bob Garner and Mike as OJ and I sit in the shanty to see if we can't photograph some northern pike. In the UP, these shanties are called shacks. Some places they're called fish coops. The names aren't great, but these little buildings sure are comfortable. No matter what the temperature is outside, inside the gloves come off, the jackets come off. In an organized shanty like Mike Copenhaver's, everything has its place for comfort, convenience, and practicality. The real business end of spearing is those six sharp points with barbs. The Indians carve spears out of wood or bone, a form of gathering fish for food in the winter that's, an old, that's as old as time. A North American heritage that's practiced on lakes all over the North. But from the outside, you wouldn't have any idea what's going on inside these buildings on the lakes. To lure a pike under the shanty, wooden decoys are a tradition. But Mike had a wall full of conventional lures. What about all these spoons? You use these? Okay, in... we, we use these spoons, Fred. This isn't a tractor to get the fish into the hole. You know, once, mm -hmm. once they're in the hole, then the spirit is the rest. But while well, you take this one, this is a call a marathon spoon with a little uh, rattle deal on the end. Of it. It's just a noise factor. You can actually mm -hmm. hear it clatter down there, and, and I'm convinced that some of the northerns are attracted by the noise. Now, the northerns ever hit these? Oh, yes. They'll come in sometimes and strike them. And okay, but do you catch them? Uh, it's pretty hard to control a northern when you don't have a drag system on a stationary <laughs> line, you know, or... So you try all these things. What is this? A uh... that's a, a ripple stock uh, yuck zipper that we mm -hmm. use out in the, for salmon fishing. But it's so these are salmon lures. Okay, now what about this here? <laughs> this is a story in itself here. Yeah. I had a fellow that was fishing quite close to me one year, and he was constantly bugging me about what I was getting my fish on. <laughs> so I went home and I made this thing up. I brought it to the lake, and the next time he came to the door and was quizzing me, I said, "Well, take this. This is what I'm seeing all oh. my fish on." So he took it and jigged it for the whole day and he never said anything. So actually I made it as a joke. 
one day when things were slow out here, and I was just horsing around, I put it down, and I speared about a four-pound northern, believe it or not, come in on it. So huh. I guess anything will work that's got a little flash to it. Now, what about using a live minnow, a live sucker minnow? Okay. Does a live minnow work better than uh, than these hand-carved My decoys? personal preference in the, in the clear, shallow water, I prefer the, the wooden decoy. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, more movement, uh, flashier action. I see more fish on the artificial line. Mm -hmm. Mike Copenhaver is not just a fisherman, but he's one of a growing number of fish decoy carvers. Now this is a true form of North American folk art. Six or eight inches long, painted different colors, but balanced with metal or wooden fins so they turn in a circle under the shanty. These fish decoys represent a lot of time and a lot of enjoyment to Mike. Made with his own hands, they're more fun to use. Now here's one of his favorites. He says this one attracts a lot of pike, so I clip it to the line that's looped through an eye hook in the ceiling. The decoy hangs by this line, and to make it move, you yank the cord in small jerks. That's not difficult, and it gives you something to do while you're waiting for a pike. As we look down into the hole, after shutting the door, we can see the bottom, and OJ and I begin to see some small fish. I went right under you. Now there's a bluegill right straight down here, but it's small. You see it right down there? It's oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I think that's yeah. a gill. Yeah, and it's. Oh god, there's perch moving off to the under the sides of the holes. You know what we need is a setup of mirrors. <laughs> Somebody's got to come with a those big round mirrors they have in the stores. You know, check for shoplifters. We'll put a couple of those down here. Yeah, unless you get your face down to the water, you can't see under the edges of the hole in the ice. It's a little frustrating. That's probably yeah, plenty. Yeah, well, we may just picked up the perch. Yeah. You can see how well that perch is camouflaged with the bottom. Just moving slow. With body Perfect. temperatures in the 30s, these fish are slow. I'd like to see him dart out of here, because that'd mean a pike is coming. It wasn't long after the perch swam off that a northern pike came into the decoy. The first pike I had seen while spearing. I got him. I got him. Don't I? I missed. Holy cow. <laughs> well, trust you, bungled that one, got pike fever and made a lousy throw. Later, I tried a wiggle wart lure, that white spot on your right, and I got another chance. Well, you see it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get the spear. But this pike didn't seem to like the decoy. I hope he comes back. Come on, come back, Mama. Come on. See him swimming off. Dog got it. I wonder if I missed my chance. Oh, my heart's thumping again. It's amazing how excited you can get. And a minute later, that pike came back. This one this time. You see him Yeah, he should come in slow, I hope. Can you see him now? Yeah, I can see him. Well, the camera could see him, but he was at an angle, and all I could see was his nose. Don't kind of move in there, guy. In the winter, fish move so slowly, it drives you crazy. Doesn't look like he's hungry, does he? No, just curious. Can you see the spear? Yeah. Yeah, my heart is thumping. Doggone it, get in here. I wonder if I should take a poke at him. Doggone it all. I wonder if he'll be back. I wonder if I should take a poke at him there. No, no, I did the right thing. I didn't have a clear shot. Always better to pass it up. Later, the light was out. You can hear me throw the spear, and the action began. This is where we do the left. I had to get him. Flip it on, flip it on. I got him. Okay. Ooh, he's pulling a little bit here, too. He's, a, he's a, not a bad one. Let me get the door open so I can... Okay. You ready? Yep. Oh, he, he's not he's not bad. Lucky he's going to take the spear clear down it's here. Big, it was a big one. I can see it. Oh, I tell you, thump, thump, thump my heart. Okay, 
Yeah, he's he's fighting. He's fighting. Oh, I got him speared good through the back. Here he comes. Oh, whoops! I just about snapped a decoy off here, and there he is. At long last, my first pike with a spear. To retain its flavor and freshness, we bury it in the snow alongside the shanty. Fillet out the bones, it's going to make a great recipe. The next time you see spearing shanties dotting a lake, you'll understand the quiet dramas that take place inside, in the dark, in Michigan outdoors. <laughs>
No kidding. On opening morning, you got it? Yep. Outstanding. What a way to break into hunting. Congratulations. Thank you. 14-year-old Brian Rentschler from Horton got it on opening morning, a 12-pointer. This buck was the same one Brian missed with his bow a few weeks earlier. A great trophy, plus 200 pounds of venison on the hoof, plenty reason enough to make 14-year-old Brian Rentschler our Michigan Outdoors Big Buck Hunter of the Week. The Sichuan pheasants are apparently holding their own in Livingston and Washtenaw counties. DNR biologist Pete Squibb says there are plenty of sightings being reported in the area, and the DNR is planning on putting out several hundred more Sichuan birds into Livingston County this spring. And just as many of us might have predicted, the number of deer licenses sold to females fell 40% since the two-deer law went into effect. Bait and sport shops in the North Country had reported a drop in license sales to females during the early part of the gun season. The DNR is advertising nationally for a vendor to reopen the Point Moulier shooting range. The range has been closed for over a year and was one of the very few places left in southeast Michigan where a hunter could sight in a gun. And preliminary indications are that turkey numbers are up at least 25% in the northern lower peninsula. Turkey permit applications are also up 25% with over 28,000 hunters applying. We got a letter from a Canadian viewer, George Dennis from Thunder Bay, Ontario, who's kind of on a wild goose chase. He writes, I was watching a large V of Canada geese flying south. I was surprised to see a smaller, lighter colored bird in the long line of the V, about six birds from the point. I was told this could have been a snow goose since geese only tolerate their own kind. Have you ever seen this? And is it common? Well, I haven't seen that before, but several waterfowl experts said it was probably a blue or a snow goose. Sometimes a duck will follow a string of geese flying lower and behind, but nobody we talked to has ever heard of a duck flying in with geese, so I'd bet it was a snow goose. An appreciation for his dedication to handicappers. Last weekend, Outdoors Forever was in the spotlight at the Central Michigan Sports Show when the Michigan Charter Boat Association gave me an award on behalf of Outdoors Forever. Oh, Outdoors Forever began as a means of getting sportsmen who had become handicapped back into hunting and fishing because they loved it so much and it meant so much to them. Found out that Frankly, that eventuality of becoming disabled happens to all of us, even if you don't have an accident or a disease, all you have to do is live long enough. That's the message I give to everybody about Outdoors Forever, and the Charter Boat Association was kind enough to present Roger McCarville with a contribution. Our Michigan Charter Boat Association would like to present a check for $300 for the continuation of your program. Well, thank you. Thank you. Financial contributions are important to every nonprofit organization, but a big contribution that companies have made is inventions. This one, called a grabber, holds ropes and is especially useful to people who can only use one hand. And you can put the rope in it without having to uh, tie it or weave it on anything. You just put the rope in it like that, and when you pull down on it, it works like a cam action. This cam comes, this jaw comes forward, which holds your rope. Nice. And yet you can take the rope in and out you just pull the rope in and out without having to tie any knots or without having to weave it on anything, so it works real nice. And that'll hold it tight enough? That would hold it tight The grabber enough. has lots of uses for boaters and fishermen. Holding a live basket of fish, for example, when you want to hoist it aboard or add another fish, the rope easily releases so you can haul it up. Clip it back in with one hand, and it stays. You can imagine how much easier this makes setting the length for an anchor. You don't have to have one arm disabled to see how an invention like this benefits everybody. With enough innovations, the entire outdoors will be open to people with physical disabilities. We should find Roger McCarville in here. Hey, Rog. Come on in. Oh. I'm ready. Well, look at you. Oh, what you doing in great. here? I'm doing a little spear fishing, but uh, I've only seen one so far. I didn't get him. Have you really? I really, really did. It's a nice pike. From what I could see, it's not really bright down there, but mm -hmm. uh, it looked good, and I was trying to get it, and it just didn't get out in time. So you wheeled right in here with your chair. 
Yeah, I could get in here and uh, sit down. You got a double holder. I got my my uh, jig back there and the spear here. Mm. I'm waiting. Roger is comfortable and enjoying himself on the ice. There's no reason you or a handicapped friend or relative can't participate either. Smile! There are many ways we can teach you how to enjoy the outdoors forever. More information about the subjects you see on Michigan Outdoors is contained in our Outdoor Digest magazine. rugged shore and woodlands of the north, its history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again, and all that waits the sportsman in the state of Michigan. Next week on Michigan Outdoors, we'll bring you highlights from our hunting awards banquet in Lansing, the tallest of the tall tales from the hunters who took the biggest trophies in 1987. If you can't join us for the banquet, join us for the show. Not only impressive, it's entertaining. Sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in the state of Michigan